What's up guys, I'm Tom, welcome back to my channel. Well, in part one with this Mustang, we washed it and clayed it. And in part two, we polished up all the chrome and all the trim. And in this third part, we're actually gonna get into the paint correction and the polishing and remove some of these scratches and make the paint look like this. So the trunk was actually the first panel I worked on since it was scratched so badly. And here I'm using the Rupes 21. And I think I'm using a Meguiar's microfiber cutting pad here with the Griot's Fast Correcting Cream. And it was pretty crazy. This paint was hard and these scratches were pretty deep. And it wound up taking me three cuts to get this trunk to where I wanted it as far as removing the scratches. I did measure the thickness of the paint and it was actually 10 mil or more across most of the car so I did have a lot of paint to work with so I wasn't as fearful with all the polishing I was doing. So after with how long it took me to cut that trunk lid I decided on the hood to actually switch to the rotary with the 9 inch wool pad and I was actually using Meguiar's 105 here. So this is pretty much the most aggressive combination I had. And it still took two cuts with the wool pad. And after that, I actually still went over it again with the 21 with a microfiber cutting pad to just get those scratches out and get the paint where I wanted it. You know, I was looking for, you know, maybe 90 to 95% correction to try and get rid of a lot of these scratches and, and really bring these this faded scratched paint back to life. So this is what happens when you put a little too much compound on and you hit the trigger a little too early and you can see that compound just splattered everywhere. Not a huge deal, but a little bit of extra wiping up. And I also wanted to give you guys an idea of, you know, my arm speed, how fast I'm, I'm moving the machine compared to, you know, I'm keeping the machine also at a relatively low speed. And I think this footage to me is funny because you don't feel like you're pressing that hard when you're wiping it off, but you could see that hood really bowing when I was pushing down on there with the microfiber towel. And this uh, <laughs> Rupes 21 got a lot of work on this car. Um, a lot of big flat panels, so it made sense to use the large throw of this machine to an advantage. And I also like the way the footage looks with that big throw on this machine. Uh, 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 uh. That, that took the machine off too early. <laughs> it just sprayed the whole freaking car with compound. Ah, oh, lovely. The other machine that got a workout on this car was this Rupes 3 inch machine. There was a lot of areas getting in close to the trim and smaller panels, you know, only one or two inch in width. And this machine just fits so nicely in all those areas, so I used it a lot. And of course, this one came back out after all the work it got and polishing all the chrome and the trim. And the tops of these doors, it just definitely was the easiest to polish them. I actually tried using the 3 inch machine on here and I just felt like it was a little too aggressive and I was riding hard on those edges and risking kind of burning through the paint on those tall edges. This was one of the few places I actually used the Duetto during the cutting process. Um, it made sense to me here because only having that 12 millimeter throw, it's not quite as aggressive and I knew I was going to be bumping up a little bit against this Mustang emblem. And I just didn't want to hammer it with the 21 machine. And back to the Duetto again. This is hands down my favorite combination for polishing a car and really fine tuning the finish on the paint. Um, one, I like the form factor of the Duetto. I like the smaller polisher. It's easier to hold with one hand if you have to. But again, with the Rupes yellow pad, I love it. And the Meguiar's 205 and just take your time and do small sections at a time and just really dial in that paint and get it fine-tuned. I find the Duetto is also a little bit less fatiguing than the 21 Mark III, and it's just smoother because of the, that less throw. 
So here I actually put masking tape over a little bit of a rust spot. And then after I'm done polishing the whole car, I'll just put the polisher on really low and go over that spot. That way I'm not trying to rip a chip of paint off, but the gloss on this car came out absolutely phenomenal. Check that out. It just had so much reflectivity when I was done. It was such a joy to just look at. So there it is in the sun before and you can see some of those swirls and scratches and then after you can just so see the extra gloss this paint has now and even in broad sun you know there was no swirls on this car I ended up with a really nice finish and you can see that was before with all the swirls and then there's that roof and straight sunlight you know not a swirl to be found and again those bad scratches on the trunk and they were still there for sure but you really couldn't see them anymore i didn't shoot any footage of the interior really but i actually did hand polish all the chrome on all the dials and the knobs and the dashboard looked really cool after that so with that the car was all finished up and it was time to hit the road and go for a nice drive. After the action footage, I wanted to leave you guys with a couple stills, so I feel like these few pictures really captured how glossy this car really was. And there's a happy driver with his happy kids in the car with him, and they were psyched to be riding around in this thing. And then off into the sunset. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.